Hello, you wonderful people. Welcome to or welcome back to the channel. Today, we are covering a topic that we haven't talked about in a dedicated video for a little bit of time. It's been a bit. And it's how to grow on Instagram organically. Let's dive in. Now, this video is about specific tactics that you as a business owner or creator can use to get more eyeballs onto your content and therefore more discovery and convert those viewers into followers. Now, we're not gonna cover anything like profile optimization because that needs to be done before you get to the point where you're trying to increase your reach. And we actually already covered it in this video. So we would highly encourage you to watch that to get your profile entirely optimized. Then come back here and we're going to increase that reach. There you go. And another thing we want to say is this is not going to be the kind of video that is telling you to post 28 times per week <laughs> or a reel every single day, because yeah. I have a suspicion now, which that I haven't told you that? about. Yeah, I have a feeling that they say these things to you because they know it's almost impossible. So that way, if you Keeps can't it, do it, watching. then it, yeah, it's like, oh, you need to do all these things and you don't do it. And if you didn't do it, you didn't grow because that's why. Mm, so it's like your fault. It's out. kind of like just like saying to do something ridiculous or like completely <laughs> unsustainable and then when you don't succeed it's your fault for not doing that you know so what we're going to give you is very sustainable tactics that are proven that we've used in our agency and with our clients including one that helped us get 2000 followers in one day that we're going to cover as well so the first thing that you're going to want to do before we get to anything on the optimization techniques and a few things we're going to talk about is actually make sure that your account is set up for recommendation. Mm. So that means that your account is eligible to show up in search places like search places like suggested profiles, all these areas that will help you with discovery, including explore. So how you can do this and why you're doing this is kind of in the shadow ban category of a conversation is just to make sure there are no markings against your account that will prevent this. You can check that your account is in good standing by going to the settings in your Instagram account, heading over to account status and under account status, you want to make sure that you have three check marks, just clear down the board to make sure that you're eligible for recommendations across all surfaces of the app. If you have an X or any errors at all, all, you need to dispute those errors because they are going to prevent you from being recommended. And literally the whole point of everything today is to make sure that we're setting you up for success. So you want to make sure that you have that technicality cleared out before you get to the other steps. The first way that you can grow Instagram followers organically is to understand the algorithm. Mm -hmm. So if you're playing a game and you don't really understand the rules or the, the way that things are set up, you're putting yourself at a pretty serious disadvantage. Now, fortunately, we actually did this video right here, which explains exactly how the Instagram algorithm works and all of the signals and markers and all those things and how you can create content to play into that so it works in your favor. And two of the things that we're gonna focus on that we touched on in that video, which are super important in terms of optimization here are the types of information that you're going to give Instagram. So it knows who you are and who to serve your content to, and then relationship building and nurturing, because those are signals again to the algorithm to serve your content to specific types of people. So definitely recommend that you check out that algorithm video in full. And that'll also help you understand why we're saying the things that we're saying in this video. Yes. Another way to grow your Instagram following organically is to optimize your profile posts for discovery. Now, what this looks like, there's actually a key part that we want you to make sure that you're not missing out on, and that is suggested profiles. So another thing we're going to get you to do is go over to your profile right now, hit edit profile. You can do this from your desktop and just make sure that you have suggested profiles toggled on. That means that Instagram, based on the information they have about you, will know who who to recommend your account to if someone else follows that account. So for example, if you owned a bakery, then they're going to know that you're also in baking or a baking account that might be in the same area. And they'll suggest that profile if someone follows that baking account. So that's also what's really important when it comes to the information we give Instagram and the relationships that we build with Instagram. Now on the post level, there are a number of things you can do to give your post the best chance of being fed to more and more people. That would include things like adding the location, 
which is a pretty rare thing, I would say. Honestly, overall. even not enough people do that. Not enough people do that. It kills me, really. Even I'll just say, the city, like, as a business owner or influencer, it's important to have that. When we were looking at influencers to hire, just a side know. note, the biggest <laughs> issue we had was that people didn't Where have their locations, they? and we're like, or in their bio, or in their bio, or anything like that. So make sure that your location is there, and it matters because Instagram, which we've talked about in this video, has a full feed dedicated to just locations, mm -hmm. so people nearby. So you have to have to make sure that you're adding your locations to your posts especially if you're servicing like a specific community yeah. but even if you're just a creator in an area that's how you're going to get invited to events that's how you're going to get these yeah. partnerships with local brands it's super super important so yes yeah i forgot about that and i got yeah. triggered hard like yeah it <laughs> drove me crazy it made it almost impossible to, to find, find people creators, there's so many yeah. people who lost out on opportunities yep. to get paid because we didn't have time to go back and forth and decide where you are and reach out yeah. to you. And yeah, we just move it on. It wasn't enough time, so you just move and move on. There's exactly. a million people. Um, also, things like the keywords, alt text, topics, and also toggling on so that you can be suggested in Facebook Reels, which is super, super key. Mm -hmm. Now, we have a bit of a freebie that can help you out. If you hit the link in the description, it is a Instagram Reels checklist that will give you all of the main things that you need to do to make sure that your post is as optimized as possible to be shown to as many folks as possible. It can. Of course, and that covers real specifically, but in the end, majority of the steps are the same in terms of optimization. Correct. And another key thing that you want to make sure you have is a call to action, mm. a CTA on every single post. We yep. never post and don't include a CTA. Of course, that CTA needs to ladder back up to what your objectives are. But the reason why you want to have that CTA is because you're trying to get an interaction and engagement that will push you up in the algorithm. So for example, saves. The reason that you would ask for saves is because if someone saves content that's a signal that when you check out that algorithm video you'll see why we're saying this mm -hmm. that is a signal that instagram uses to say this is valuable content we need to show it to more people or when you tell people to share when you're asking them to share that's increasing your reach because if i share it with craig then craig is a new eyeball and then he potentially might follow if he likes the content that i've shared with him if you've ever often. shared a meme or yeah. done anything with any of your friends or shared any posts you know what happens usually they just end up following the account because you guys have the same interests. Yeah. so you want to create those relationships and give instagram that kind of information so it knows to share your content to more people and the type of person to share it to. Another phenomenal way to grow your followers organically on Instagram is by using proactive targeted interactions daily. This is something that we have spoken about ad nauseum since beginning the channel. Mm -hmm. And it is so deeply important as time goes on. I feel like less and less people are doing it too. Yeah. People are getting lazier They're messing and up. want yeah, messing up big time. This is such a huge way to grow that gets overlooked and it's like the fundamental of Instagram. hundred yeah. percent, yes, absolutely. And what it really is doing is telling Instagram about the relationships that you're forming within the algorithm with other accounts and within your niche. So one of the best examples, for example, take a cafe. What we And we've had cafe clients in the past mm -hmm. and we did exactly this. So you would follow other cafes in your city, in your area, wherever it is, maybe a little broader, you would follow roasters. Not only would you follow those accounts, accounts because you are interested in them and you want to keep an eye on what your competitors and peers are doing, but also you're going to want to comment on those posts, letting the algorithm know that, hey, we're a cafe and they're a cafe and we're commenting and we're engaging and we're in DMs with each other. And it just keeps giving the algorithm more and more signals that, hey, these are cafes and anyone like me, I've got a few friends that I share coffee reels and stuff with every single day. So that means that it's indicated that somebody like me is going to be interested on hearing about a cafe, particularly if it's say in Toronto. So they would be fed out to us. And that's really what you're trying to do is truly establish that relationship like concrete and aggressively and proactively. And you need to do this every single day. Yeah. And when you really think about it, when you go to someone's post and you always see like three comments, you either get like one to three comments depending and especially mm -hmm. if they pin them so that is already one a version of visibility that you're going to get so if you're one of the comments that are either pinned or just on there when i scroll i'm gonna be like oh what's that cafe commenting on my other favorite cafe yep. then you click that so that's one area of visibility and then again the relationship signaling that you're creating and if you are for example in an area that's more competitive say it doesn't have to be a competitor. It doesn't need yeah. to be like another cafe, for example. That's why Craig mentioned like a roaster, but that could also just be somebody like a restaurant because in the end we're both in food and beverage. That's enough for the algorithm to understand, okay, these are local businesses. So if anyone else is interested in these local businesses, they might be interested in your account as well. And if you are a creator and you're looking to build an audience, that's gonna be very important too, to connect with other creators. That's how so many creators and influencers that you follow blew up per yeah. se, because they're all commenting on 
each other's posts, always interacting with each other so the algorithm could understand that they were in the same niche. And another important tactic that we would recommend here when we're looking at what that daily proactive targeted interactions look like is to comment on larger brand accounts that are in the same niche of your target audience. So for example, if I owned a children's clothing brand, something that I would be doing is commenting proactively on like large meme mom accounts. A lot of brands have done this very well where you'll Mm. see that like you'd be like, why is Chipotle in the comments of this thing? And it's because the content is Chipotle's audience. So even if it's not the content itself, it's who the content's speaking to. And that's why they're all up in the comment section is because they want you to see that, whether it be funny, whatever aspect it is, it's driving attention to you. And usually when it comes to larger brands, they're not able to engage in the same way as you are. So if you're on a massive meme account, or if it was a publisher, for example, with the children's clothing brand, if I was following like, parents guide mom's guide obviously i don't have children i don't have the i don't have the even one example to give you (laughs) but you know accounts that are larger and you want to be interacting with those in the comment section as well so that means liking and replying to comments when it makes sense specifically on larger brand accounts because it's less obvious that you're poaching followers on a massive brand account Another way to increase your ranking in the algorithm is to engage with your current audience. And one of the best ways to do that is via stories. So all the other tips that we were just talking about are about growing and attracting new audience, which is fantastic, but you do have to nurture the audience you already Mm -hmm. have. One of the easiest ways is via stories. For example, whoever you have in stories that come up on your, the top of your feed, definitely engage with them, respond if it's, if it's cool, even if it's just an emoji, sometimes they might have a sticker where you can actually respond with Q&A or something like that. But what that's actually telling the algorithm from their account, and typically you might even get into a DM conversation, is it's gonna continue to show your account to those people that you're engaging with. So what this looks like tactically is going in and actually like liking their story because your little heart will come up. And again, Instagram's like, cool, there's a relationship here. So when this account posts, we gotta make sure that it shows up in their feed. So it can be in the DMs and stories, and that's because it's highly prioritized, which we talked about in this video. But what it also looks like is going into your feed and liking posts in your feed as well. Mm. What you're just trying to do is making sure that you don't just post and disappear. That's the worst thing you could do. You want to keep nurturing the relationships you have in addition to attracting new people to your account. So that way your account continues to stay in algorithms of various people, whether it be new followers or current followers as well. If you're wondering what that looks like timing wise, we would recommend you taking 30 minutes out of your day. But even if you only had 15 minutes, we would say divide those three tactics into three. So five minutes is spent engaging and commenting on your niche so with people in your niche like the local cafe like we talked about and then another five minutes is spent on large brand accounts commenting on their accounts and also getting into the comments section and engaging with their followers and fans so you can bring them over and then another five minutes would be scrolling through your feed and liking posts and commenting where it makes sense and doing the same in stories as well hopefully bringing people into your dms Another way to grow your Instagram followers, and it's very important, is to study your competitors. So think about that list that we just talked about of the people you're doing proactive targeted engagement with. They're also the people who want the same audience as you or attracting that same audience. So see what's working for them. This is really important. Find out how the content is resonating, which you generally can know by the comments and see how you can bake that into your content strategy as well. We're not saying plagiarize. We're not saying to steal. There's actually the concept of steal like an artist. And it means basically like you transform and you mix yeah. and reinvent Sample. the other person's content. Yeah. You're sampling, right? You're sampling, you're not taking. Take time to actually write down five to 10 competitors or people who are attracting the same audience as you and then study their content consistently and save those pieces of content that you feel stand out more directly in Instagram or in another app that you're using in order to like save content ideas. Another way you can grow your following organically on Instagram is to collaborate with influencers or other relevant accounts in feed. And one collaboration for one of our clients actually resulted in, was it over 2,000 followers? It was over 2,000 followers that we got, and that was from like a hotel tour. 
right. for example. And that so, was in one day. And that was in one day. This, of course, was a macro influencer, so yeah. someone really massive. It just illustrates the impact of what happens when you tap into someone else's hyper-engaged following. And hyper-relevant to your niche, exactly. too, so it all makes sense. Now, that was a macro example, so therefore there was some money involved. Now, it doesn't always have to be that way. We've talked at length on the channel about micro and nano influences, which mm -hmm. is probably where most of the viewers were going to be at as far as who you could work with. So that usually is like a, a trade, like an in-kind thing. So mm -hmm. maybe you might send your product to somebody who will do a video explaining how to use it or an unboxing or something like that. And then they tag you as a collaborator. So it appears in both of your feeds, essentially doubling the reach. The idea being that you as the business owner typically are going to take advantage of the creator's audience. And then they're going to be, if they're interested in the creator, which is your niche, they're very likely to be interested in you as well. So hopefully that converts in followers at the very least, it'll be some engagement and some brand awareness, which is always a great thing. hundred percent. And I think with influencers too, this is huge as well. So it works for business owners, but when it's creators, that's what you also should be doing. Again, if you have the same niche and you want to grow together, make sure that you're engaging with people in your niche and creating those relationships so you can actually collaborate together. So whether that looks like actually going out and shooting content together and then posting that and collaborating, but it could also be like an online collab or it could be a live. Remember when you have a live, you can get up to four people mm -hmm. on that too. So that's something to really pay attention to as well. And we will be doing a video on how to select the right influencers based on the feedback that you all gave us in the last video or in our social media strategy video. You all said you were really interested in learning more about how to select the right influencer, perhaps how to pay and mm -hmm. then how to pitch and what insights to look up. So we've run over 400 influencer campaigns. We have been in it deep, but we really believe in the power of it, especially when you have the right one. So definitely subscribe if you're not subscribed yet, because that video is coming out very soon. The next way to grow on Instagram is to leverage other platforms. This is oh, yeah. another underrated tactic, and it's one that we are using to grow. And honestly, if you follow YouTubers, you will likely notice a lot of the times that they have a large Instagram following. Usually it's like the YouTube comes first and then the Instagram comes. It's yeah. actually harder to grow in the inverse. Like it's harder to be a larger Instagrammer and then get people to go Instagrammer. 100%. Like creator have a large account and then get people over to YouTube. It's usually the opposite way. That's a tactic. So what that looks like is making sure that your profile or any important content pieces are leveraged on other platforms, especially SEO rich platforms. So when we're saying this, we're talking about Pinterest and YouTube. Pinterest is another SEO rich platform that uses keywords for discovery. It's I, we're going to do a video on Pinterest as oh, well, yeah. because the power of Pinterest is incredible. But if you look at Pinterest, for example, you're able to publish your Instagram post directly on Pinterest or just link your posts out to Instagram. So you could re-upload and you'll see if you check out our Pinterest, we re-upload content there and then we direct people to our Instagram if it's not directing to our YouTube. Then when you think about YouTube, all of our links to follow us on social are in our description box and they're also on our homepage so that you can click off to Instagram. So these are two really strong platforms that are SEO rich. So with searchability, mm. which is so key, that can drive to your Instagram. Instagram as well. Definitely don't sleep on that. And then of course the other, I'd say more minor tactics would be like putting it in your signature, you know, like people usually mention that or in your link in bio, that's fine too. But leveraging searchable platforms to drive people to your Instagram is going to be the best way. Another way you can grow organically on Instagram is to check your insights. That's all of the data you're going to need right there. So if you're able to look up your Instagram insights and then take a look at some highly successful posts, the ones that performed the most, preferably with saves and shares are the main ones, but it's always good to see which ones drove a lot of comments or even just likes in general. And follows, views, of course. And yeah. follows, of course, profile visits. You can look at all the stats. And if you're able to identify any patterns, replicate it. Lean into anything that you see that's working until it doesn't work and then keep trying. There's no right answer for all of this, but at the very least, it's data-backed decisions that you can take from your insights and apply it immediately and hopefully see those results straight away. Steal from yourself. That's literally all you're doing. <laughs> it's a huge part of what we do too. We look at insights, yeah. we look at what performs the best, and then we just replicate that content in a different way. We repackage it up and reuse it. You know, it's your own content. It shouldn't only be used once. Mm -hmm. So definitely, definitely an important tactic. Another quick one, because it's so important. That's why we left it to the end though, because if we left it to the front, you would just click off because everyone gets annoyed by this. <laughs> yeah. But it's true with all things, 
commit to being consistent you have to be consistent with anything you are working towards in life you need to be consistent to see results this actually goes in tandem with the next tip so we'll just group them together which is deploy patience so be consistent and then deploy patience and when we're saying be consistent that means decide on a schedule we actually created that social media strategy for you that had frequency in it Mm -hmm. it'll be in the description box below definitely recommend you download that free template if you haven't but decide on a schedule and commit to being consistent in the content creation and the content distribution because when you continue to distribute content you're going to be able to refine it because you understand what works and what doesn't when you're checking your insights Mm -hmm. and evaluating your audience feedback but also You need to keep putting out content so that people can see you regularly so you increase your opportunities to reach new people. The more you post, the more you're going to reach. That's why we don't say, oh, you need to post 28 times a day because Mm. it's not feasible. However, the more you do post, the likelier you are to reach new people because that's just how it works when you distribute content. So keep that in mind, but commit to being consistent and then be patient with the results. Absolutely. All right, everybody, that is it for today. Thank you so much for coming back to watch another video. If you have questions for us directly, if you ever need support, you want profile reviews, you just want like more of a, you know, dedicated space with us. Get a little more personalized. Check out our membership channel. It is yeah. in the description box below. It is $5 a month at the time of recording this video. And in it, we do live Q and A's bi-weekly and we give free templates and resources every single month in addition to a bunch of other fun stuff. So definitely check that out below. Then we recommend you watch this video next because we think you will love it. We'll see you in the next one. Peace. Bye.